Hey everyone, Nick Makes Plays here. Today I'm going to go over what I think is the best deck in Legendary and Terra right now. To be clear, you can use Zoe Aesol or Shivana Aesol. Today I'm going to go over Shivana Aesol because I think it's better in the mirror match as well as better against Aurelia Azir. But let's get into it. This deck pretty much has all bases covered. It's extremely well rounded, has a powerful late game, mid game, um, and it can control the early game as well. So you have Hush for things like Gnosis, you have Concerned Strike in single combat to deal with threats, you have uh, Ability to heal back, Radiant Guardians, particularly good against Aurelia Z right now. They can't really deal with that. Star Shaping, this lets you heal, also gives alternative win cons. Screeching Dragon's Challenger can deal with all kinds of things in the big game, so well rounded overall. And then you can finish with Eclipse Dragon in turn 7 into Aurelian Soul in turn 8 from the discount from Eclipse Dragon and win the game with Aurelian Soul. So let's start. First off, 3 Dragon Chow. Um, 0 3, this is actually a good stat line. I mean, it's not like a great stat line, but for the fact it has, you usually get a block in in the early game, and then you can kill it with a Shivana or Speaking Dragon, which buffs them, lets you draw a card, and helps work towards Shivana's level up. So pretty much just an early game blocker, plus you get the, the draw on the Shivana and the buffs. All that from the Fury. Very good. Three Blue Sentinel. I like Blue Sentinel a lot in the Shivana variant, because if it dies on turn two, you're able to play Shivana early uh, against decks like Aggro. They have to attack for the most part. So you're always able to just block. Uh, I guess Ignacio's Thresh too, if they have like Butcher, you just get the block. Then next turn you can slap down Shivana, maybe an early Fangs in general. Even if you don't have a card to um, get the, the, I guess, early curve with, like you don't have a Shivana or the Fangs, you still get the bank the spell mana, which sticks around. So you get the extra spell mana for later. And if it doesn't die, then that's fine too. It's a blocker for later, good 2-3 stat line, could block two ones without dying. Uh, very strong. I, I probably should tell you what it does, I guess. When it dies, summons a Crest of Insight. Count on one, get an extra mana gem this round. It's only this one round, but again, uh, you play Squishy Dragon early if it's turn, kill in turn three, Shivana kill in turn uh, two, and then if you don't use the mana, you can bank your spell mana for later in six rounds, so that's good. All right, we have three Dragon Lord Tenet. If I'm summoned, if you behold a dragon, grant me Challenger, very good against uh, sparring students and stuff like that. When they're one ones, you can clean them up. Just uh, really, really annoying, honestly. Well, it's just good removal. It kills Zoe, all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. So, very good. Generically good. Um, if you, Again, if you have a dragon, get the challenger. And you have a lot of dragons, it actually should be good. Three sharp sight. Give an ally plus two, plus two. I can block units with elusive this round. Good against all kinds of elusives. Good at blocking Glade Dew against Relia Zir, but in general, just a good stat buff. Uh, very well rounded. It's very important to have this to protect your units to the dragons. In combats, this would be a difference between winning the combat trade or losing it, and then the fury from Shivana or Speech Dragon or whatever will get plus one, plus one permanently for the dragon. So, very good. Uh, also can work towards Aesol and Shivana's level up, too. Three single combat, very generic. An ally and enemy strike each other. Helps level Shivana. Good with healing cards um, with life steal, such as the Fangs or Radiant Guardian. You get Fury off Shivana, Screeching Dragon, Aesol, Clip Dragon, so very good. Helps deal with threats. This is part of why this deck is so well-rounded, is because you have answers with stuff like this. All right, Dragon's Clutch. Draw two different dragons or grant dragon allies plus one, plus one. Usually you'll always be drawing two different dragons. This card's great, it's going to help you work towards the Eclipse Dragon Aesol uh, finisher. It just kind of draws you more dragons in general, it's good to refuel. Uh, I like it as a one of. I, I want to fit two, I really do. I, I switch between one and two. You can cut a Dragon Child if you want a second. This card is particularly good in the mirror match. The way you win the mirror match is you need to get Eclipse Dragon into Aesol. If one person has that and one person doesn't, you win. Uh, Dragon's Clutch obviously hires the odds of doing that. So if you're seeing a lot of mirror matches or a lot of target Damasi, you want to be playing two of these. But for now, I just have one, in, but definitely could go to. Uh, two Hush, two's fine, you only need three. You can just save it for key moments in the game. Uh, against Aurelia, you can do it on Aurelia, Zir, Inspiring Marshall, what have you. But you're also able to just uh, do this on Gnosis. It particularly shines against Gnosis. Just, they get a huge threat, like their win con turned to just a 2-2 two -two and you just kill it. So very good. It's also just versatile on pretty much all matchups. Uh, 3 Shivana, very strong now she was buffed, she was a 4-4 before, with no Fury, now she's a 3-4 Fury. You kill the Dragon Chow, works towards a level up, gets plus 1 plus 1 permanently from the Fury, becomes a 4-5. When she attacks, it's plus 1 plus 1, it's a 5-6. Uh, her level up's extremely strong, attack me plus 2 plus 2. This round, and create a Fleeing Strike and Strike in hand, that's a single combat, basically, for 3 mana. And if uh, the Allies Dragon heals too, so very strong level up. Basically just hold down the mid game. Something really strong against Aurelia Zir is they put all the blades and the sand soldiers. You can just block those sand soldier blades and then start working towards your level up while also gaining a permanent plus one plus one. 
very good in the mirror match because it, it gives the threat they have to deal with and a lot of the invokes that Zoe gets or Space Sketcher can't really deal with Shibana. So very good at holding the mid game. It just makes a deck like this has so many answers with Concern Strike and Hush and stuff like that. You play it down, you play a threat, then like say like Nasus Thresh, for example, tries to answer it. You answer the threat with the Concern Strike to single the Hush, then Shivana's still there, and then you're still just kind of hoying on the field and they can't deal with it and you win. If you don't win then, you win with the Relling's hold at the end. But um, having a strong board is significant when you have all kinds of answers to deal with uh, what they have to do and you just keep winning by poking your Shivana. Next, the Fangs, very versatile. Uh, four mana, three two with life steal. Invoke a celestial card cost three or less. This card is amazing because it gives you access to Equinox, which sounds something you saw in Sparring Marshall or Sparring Stu whenever. It gives you the Serpent for Challenger, you know, Trickster for Elusive, uh, Crescent Strike to stop against aggressive stuff, uh, just on two. Also good against you know Aurelia's ear. So very versatile card gives you answers. You already have a lot of answers, but it gives you even more answers to all kinds of things. Uh, very good. Very generically good. All right, next we have. Concert Strike. So I'm running two right now. I also can see this being three. I actually like three a lot, but sometimes your hands are weird if you have too many strikes, like you have the single combats and concerted. So two is fine. It's more expensive than single combat. Uh, pick an enemy to always strike it one after another. So you get the life steal off of these. Very good stuff um, to deal with all kinds of threats, especially the higher health threats because you get two units attacking. Helps get your Shvana level up, get your Fury. Good to go. Three Radiant Guardians. So normally you'd be running Solar Sun Forger. Um, most metas you use this over Radiant Guardians. The, the Daybreak gave me life steal this round. Still very good. Debailly better against aggro because it uh, comes out a turn earlier. But this is better against Aurelia Zir, which is very popular right now. So when I'm summoning, grant me life steal and tough and ally die this round. The reason why this is permanent. This is only for the round. Uh, since this is permanent, it won't die or it'll be very hard to kill because they're tough. And then you just keep healing turn after turn and they have to answer with Homecoming. If they don't have Homecoming, you usually just win because they can't deal with Radiant Guardian. Like You just heal infinitely and there's no way out of it. Because uh, they won't die because they're tough. And the Hellite Steel's not for the round, so you're good. It's permanent. And then if they do Homecoming it, you just try and play it again. Like, you know, you just trade whatever. Whenever something dies, you just play it again. It's very hard to deal with uh, for that deck. So overall, very good card right now. Again, very good with the Concerned Strike, single combats, because you heal off the Life Steal. Uh, three Screeching Dragons, this card's just absolutely amazing. Five mana, four, five, Challenger Fury. Kills the unit, gets plus one, plus one. This answers to threats. Um, if you have like a get buff one time or whatever, you can try and kill Zeers, you can kill Aurelia's, you can kill Azriel, Draven, I mean, I could, I could, the list just goes on. This is just how you deal with stuff. Uh, very good. Also, a dragon, so it helps level Shivana. Search for Dragon's Clutch, can be buffed by Dragon's Clutch. Uh, this is really a card that lets you hold in the mid game until you get down to Clips Dragon Aesol. Next is Star Shaping. Book Celestial your card that costs seven or more, then heal an ally, or next is five. You can heal your, your dragons that have Fury and get buffed. Um, so they have the health back, but usually you want to heal your Nexus 5. This is very good because it allows you to be more flexible with your early game. Like, you can take some damage and not just like, oh, I need to get Radiant Guardian or I lose. Like, you're able to just have this burst speed heal 5, and it also gives you Alt Win Con. The Alt Win Con's great. It can give you elusives like uh, Mortal Phoenix or a little Roman Destroyer, an elusive like the Great uh, Beyond. So you heal 5. You're pretty much always in the game if you have Star Shade in your deck. Even if you're down to like 5 health, heal like the 10. And you can get Alt Wincon if they can't deal with Elusives. It's just versatile also if you're able to get like Living Legends gives you all kinds of things. Supernova can banish or obliterate to uh, enemy units. Very powerful answers to stuff like SX Swain Leviathan. So versatile, strong, very good deck. Very good card. Clips Dragon. So you mostly want to be using it just for the first effect, but seven mana seven seven, daybreak. The next dragon slash unit you play costs two less. You want to be using this on turn seven. To play a soul in turn eight, it's discounted. So if you need to refuel or whatever, you don't have a Relian Soul. Uh, if the second card played this turn, or as long as it's not the first card played this turn, you create a random dragon follower and celestial follower in your hand. So uh, really good to refuel in the late game. I like it a lot. But usually you just want to use the Daybreak to get the a soul uh, discount. Then we have a soul here. This is the uh, the bomb. This is how you win like every late game. You know, you get this down. If you can get down turn eight, people usually can never win. I mean, it's one of the powerful cards in the whole game, and it's really fun to play. So 10 mana, 10, 10. Fury, Spell Shield. So Fury is get the plus one, plus one, and it kills the unit. Spell Shield negates next enemy or skill that would target it, or would affect it. Uh, play, invoke a celestial card that costs seven or more. So it's already like a huge stat line that gives you a win con with the invoke. And then round start also creates a random celestial hand. Another win con. Round end, your allies have 25 plus power. Um, very easy to do with all the huge dragons in this deck and like hoof dragon and such. Then when you have that, it gets plus one, plus one, but your celestial cards cost zero. So every slush you, you get or you make 
the big, you know, nine mana elusives, um, you know, just living legends, everything. It all costs zero. And you can just get infinite value of late game bombs and you just win from here on out. Then his champ spell, also another win condition. So it costs 15. And so it's still 15 to all enemies, but it costs two or less for each dragon or celestial owl you have. Uh, it's in play, by the way, not in hand. Uh, this card is just crazy to have as a late game win con. Like you're in the mirror and you just blow up their whole field. It seems expensive at first, but just having access to this card can just blow people away. I, I play against decks a lot of time, like they have like Swain Leviathan, you just blow up their whole field. And if Aurelian Souls a late game wasn't already, you know, you win the game enough, like, you know, Celestials and the huge stats and stuff, you also have this that can just blow up the entire enemy field. Uh, if you already have Aurelian Soul out, Dragon's Clutch can help search this because it searches Aurelian Soul and then it transforms into this. So this deck has answers to just about everything you run into. If you want a solid, well-rounded deck to climb against, you know, all the crazy stuff of final ladder, this will go even or beat most all the tier one decks, as well as just being pretty hard to jank out. I mean, you have the concerned strikes, the healing, the hush, you know, the, the, the silencing, um, strong late game, strong mid game. You're just kind of good to go. Uh, my Mulligan recommendations in this deck is to try and keep your early game units. You don't have many of them. You only have really the Blue Sentinel, Dragon Chow, and Dragon Lieutenant. Uh, this can be weird without a dragon like Shivana, but you really need to keep Blue Sentinel and Dragon Guard Lieutenant because they're your, your only early game blockers uh, for the most part. But it's fine because you heal everything back later. So you're good. All right. Uh, other cards are on this deck. I guess it'd be like Solaris Sunforge is strong. Daybreak, uh, give me life steal this round. Um, if you, you want to place that with Radiant Guardian for early or uh, healing against like aggro. Second Dragon Clutch good in the mirror. In the mirror match, you need to see Eclipse Dragon into Ace Soul. Also against late game decks in general, like uh, your Win Con's Ace Soul. So this lets you see it more often. Very good. Um, other cards, you can run Zoe instead of Shivana. Um, if you were to do something like that, because it's just a good card that gives you the invoking. Then you can run Spacey Sketcher uh, for more invokes. Discard a card, invoke a Celestial card across three or less. And I would replace, if you're cutting Shivana, I would replace Blue Sentinel with Mountain Goat. Just very good, because um, you can discard the gems for Spacey Sketcher. And it's, the gems are just good for the Street Dragon to get buffed and hook uh, more units, kill a Kazir and stuff like that. Also, a good blocker against uh, the blades because you get the gems each time. You heal them back, and uh, just generically good to have an extra name for Zoe's level up. And then Pale Cascade. Pale Cascade is very good. Give an eye plus one plus one this round. Nightfall draw one. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. Let's get into some games. Riven Draven. This is pretty scary. Uh, a, a, another big streamer uh, made it more popular lately. So it, it kills you in like one turn with uh, Flurry of the Fist and stuff like that. It's Pretty terrifying, so make sure we're on our guard. Here, we want to make sure we always have an early game unit. I think the number one thing to have in this deck is uh, the Blue Sentinel or the Jaguar Lieutenant in the early game. Because a lot of your cards are expensive, so you'll you'll draw them. You'll be good in the mid game, the late game. You just really need to make sure you hit that two drop at the beginning. Even seeing a Dragon Chow is fine, just to block at the beginning. Um, okay, so we did see that. It's great. Hand's pretty well rounded. I mean, we have the Jaguar Lieutenant uh, with Shivana in hand, so it will, it will get the Challenger. We also have uh, some healing for later. We have strikes. These are very good with both of these because uh, this allows us to get the healing off Radiant Guardian when we strike or the Fury. They have a little Shabbat of the strikes. So pretty good so far. So he's banking spell mana right now. That's a good draw. A very good one, actually. So we'll start off here playing the Dragon Chow. Now we have exactly three mana to bank. We'll take this. We can heal back later. Uh, we don't want to block this quick attack. We don't want to just lose our units. We play Shivana, and then Shivana uh, will draw a card and get her plus one plus one Fury from the um, Dragon Chow. We draw a card from the Dragon Chow effect. It strikes it, and we draw a card. We can attempt to kill this. I'm sure he'll have a way to stop it, but it's still worth going for, right? Uh, Hush is very, very good in this matchup. Very, very good. Um, because uh, they, they use Flurry of the Fist, which gives things double attack. They try. They basically buff a unit and try and kill you in one turn. All we have to do is hold this until he goes for his one turn kill. Ooh. Time for the money makers. Mm. We could use it now to kill this Draven. Because it's survival skills, so now it can't drop low on health. Um, it's a card that when discarded, it makes it so your strongest unit can't die this turn. Basically, it can't drop low on health. We could hush it to stop it. Let's see how far it commits. Oh, man. Oh man, all right, I guess we'll hush this now. Because he was gonna level it up, because he, he did use the two axes here. I think it's worth just, just hushing it now. 
I did want to save that, but we also have concerted strikes and single combats for when we want to um, try and finish something off. Okay, now I'm regretting it. But he doesn't get the axes. It has two health. We can try and concerted strike it. Um, we're not exactly in a spot where we care about dying right away. Oh god, this is scary. I think I made the right move here with the hush. Not entirely sure though. Okay, so he only has 5 mana and we're still at 17. We shouldn't be worried about dying quite yet. What we can do though, is if we get one more uh, strike with this, we level up our Shivana. And then she gets way stronger. And gives us a strafing strike every turn. So we would like to block the Blade Squire here. Just get a, a safe little block in. Autographs mm. after the fight, kid. Uh, autographs I guess we'll just play- like, We don't really need the Radiant Guardian right now. Let's just play this as another blocker, because he has tons of attackers here. And then we can keep open the, the single combat. Okay. Finally, um, some action. That's fine. Alright, we're just going to block this one. We can take two here. We can use this to threaten to kill a Draven. Um, we don't want to block this one because it gives him a, a Blade Fragment. We get the Shivana level up right now. Alright. We're in a very, very good spot now, all of a sudden. We get a Strafing Strike, and we can also uh, get Radiant Guardian on the field as well. So here, we're going to attack, and we're also going to threaten to kill this Draven. We get the Strafing Strike, and this will die from this combat, and we can play Radiant Guardian. It'll be very, very hard for him to kill us through Radiant Guardian, with all these strikes. Takes A, doesn't want to lose a unit. Yeah, Shivana's level up is really powerful. Gets plus two, plus two on attack. Strafing Strike every turn. Alright, first thing we're going to do is play Radiant Guardian. I'm not sure if I'm on a Strafing Strike quite yet. Use it on Dragon, the Dragon heals too, but it's not really that important. I'd honestly rather just do it like this. Um, and get the healing. And we have top of three of healing. So now we're at, uh, we're 19. We have tons of strikes in our hands, so... If he tries to do anything, you know, slicker, go for like an OTK. We have answers, and we can also heal even more. Party wants to keep Concerned Strike up, but Party wants to play the Fangs. I think we're fine just play the Fangs and get units on the board. We, we have single combat. Ooh, this is really good in this matchup. Just done. Those are all good. I mean, the zero mana blocker is nice with the Serpent, too. Okay. A good amount of his hand at this point should be the Blade Fragments. Discarding. Now we're missed it. That wasn't an axe, was it? Discarding an overall blade fragment. Try to get another blade fragment. He's probably gonna go for a flurry of the fist here, and we're just gonna single combat. Ghost! Oh no. Oh no. Um, if he has Nobify, we lose. We're not even dead, actually. We just take this. We just take this. You can get the level, but it, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna heal it all back for Dragon Guardian. Should just bank the spell mana here. Yeah, I think he knows that. It's not really much to do for him here. Yeah, GG's. Alright, we're playing Torelli's Year this game, the talk of the town. This is pretty much the main deck everyone's been uh, going off about. It's the new tier 1 deck uh, this season. So, let's see what we can do. I want to mulligan these and just keep our early game, right? You really need the early game blockers in this matchup, and just in general, and then the rest will kind of come smoothly. If we can draw a Shibana, we're going to get a very fast level up. As of right now, we won't be getting the Challenger from the Jaguar Titan, so we don't have a Dragon. But um, let's hope we draw into Shivana or Screeching Dragon here, it'd be nice. Alright, some more blockers, not bad. Dice. Hmm. I think we bait the spell mana for later. Um, pretty good so far, they have dice. They have zero, it's scary. Alright, so now we actually do have a dragon. Luckily we waited one more turn. Let's play this while we have the challenger. He passes. I almost just want to take this pass, because he could have sparring student. I'm going to pass here so he loses one mana. He can't bank all three since he already has one. Yeah, maybe he didn't have 
Swarm shit I'm dumb, but I thought it was worth it. Alright. You can play a second Dragon Chow here to block um, the Sand Soldier and the Blades. What we're gonna do here is we can take the Blades, going do one damage, but we'll block um, the Sand Soldier because my attack directly does one more damage. Alright. We don't want to lose our mana here, so let's play another um, Jaguar Lieutenant. Alright. We can lose uh, one mana. Not really a big deal for three damage. We can heal back later with Radiant Guardian, with Star Shaping, with the Fangs, all kinds of stuff. Alright, speaking of Radiant Guardian. A cool play if you had a lot of mana, like we had 10 mana. You can play this with Chow in the field. It'll kill Chow, and that'll activate uh, Ally Dying for Radiant Guardian. But... So what we actually could do, I guess we could just we could just play it safe, just attack with both, and then play Radiant Guardian. We could just play Screeching Dragon later next turn. It's not really a big deal. We get, the earlier we get a Radiant Guardian, the better it'll be. Okay, seems we may not be getting out of Radiant Guardian this turn. We can't get Screeching Dragon, which is fine. Ooh. So that'll be buff, but uh, the Screeching Dragon here is gonna have Fury, get stronger. We draw two off this, it's already 6 7, so. <laughs> so, we should be good to block a good amount of units. Taking a good bit of damage here, um, but I want to save these to die next turn for Radiant Guardian. We also have Concert Strike, so we can make that Radiant Guardian strike uh, and heal back more health. Hush could be good for a key turn with Fire Marshal or Azir. So that's fine. But we're really going to focus on playing the Radiant Guardian this turn. Where they fall, freedom grows. Okay. Just pass here. Nothing to worry about. We could Concerge like this, but I'd rather do Concerge like when I have Radiant Guardian now. I don't want to hush this right now because I actually want one of my units to die. If I can play Radiant Guardian. All right, gone to six. Pretty scary, but we do have the healing. Okay. And then I'm six. What do you have to say? So we had that like die. It's like radiant. It wasn't glowing for a second, so I was confused. We play the radiant guardian. This should be a huge pain in this side to deal with. And then now with this online, we can concerge strike next turn and try and heal everything back. Uh, we have eclipse dragons. So all we have to do is draw Aurelian soul. And we have our wind condition. This guy has tons of cards in his hand, which is a bit scary. He could have homecoming for this, but overall we're good. Alright, doesn't even attack, because he knows we're sealed all back now. Uh, do I slam down a Cliff Dragon? Probably not. Probably want to attack first and just see what happens. These are both scary, but I think this one's a bit scarier. So we'll hook here, we'll hook here. Um, try and get the free heal in. He might go for homecoming right here, and I want to, I want to not play Cliff Dragon. Because in case he tries to homecoming, we can concert strike in response. Stop the homecoming and get the heal. I'm assuming this is homecoming or lead and follow. Homecoming. Okay. So, we're going to strike this. With this first, make sure we get the heal. And if it lives, we get the fury off that. Uh, very good to stop this. If we go to 14, we're in a great spot. We'll be healing 8 off this. This strike and the concert strike. We can also heal 5 more. Putting us at 19, right? All the way back to 19, leading into the end game with our Cliff Dragon. And then there's no way he'll beat Aesol when we get Aesol down, so we should be good to go. Does he have a second Homecoming is the question. He does have a lot of cards in his hand, so it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but we should be fine here. Uh, one thing we could have done was Sharp Sight to like live here and keep the Screeching Dragon, but... I kind of want to play it safe and see what he did. I didn't want to overcommit because he has so many cards in his hand. Like a second homecoming, stuff like that. Um, I guess we'll use this time now instead to do the healing. Wow, these are all amazing. Um, I guess we'll get Living Legend. It's kind of a tough call considering we do have a good amount of cards in hand. But I think Living Legend is the most versatile. Um, I do like both the elusives for alt win cons as well as a uh, strong side of blockers but i feel like we could get a lot of value of this if we get like equinoxes for these uh crescent strike could be good all kinds of stuff 
So he still has to deal with this. And we just drew another one, so that's great. What I'm going to try to do here is maybe we could have this die and play a second Radiant Guardian, so there's no way it can get through. Oh, he actually can't get past the first one. Alright, GG's. As you can see, this deck's extremely well-rounded against all kinds of stuff. I think it's the best deck in the game right now for uh, ranking up on ladder, or just in general the best deck in the game. We didn't even get to a point where we got to play the Aurelian Soul, which when that happens, there's no way they're coming back. We get all kinds of strong celestials each turn. We level them up that cost zero, so when it's the beginning, middle, and late game, the deck is just packed of answers with all kinds of spells and powerful units, so I feel if you want a deck you can rely on, this deck's very consistent, and it's very uh, safe across the field because of all the, the spells and answers to things. So let me know what you guys want me to make videos on in the future below. Let me know how you like the video. Uh, I'm pretty excited for stuff coming forward uh, soon. I believe we're getting champion skins in uh, Legendary Terra tomorrow. So, very exciting stuff, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.